Hi, boys and girls. Oh, look. I got, oh, my mama would call that a cow lick. Just sitting straight up. Anyway, um, welcome back to Algebra Readiness. Uh, today we're going to talk about exponents, um, you know, order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Well, today I'm going to talk a little bit about parentheses and exponents. The please stands for parentheses. Excuse stands for exponents. We're going to talk about that because you need to know a little bit about those in order to um, know what you're doing in algebra. Before we throw those variables, you know, those letters into it. So here we go. Here I have a whole number, 2, and I have the exponent 4. Now the exponent just, all that means is, however, whatever number is here is the exponent, that's how many times you're going to multiply your whole number. So basically this means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals, that's, that's all that means. That we're going to multiply 2 four times, so it's going to be multiplied by itself four times. So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 2 is 16. So here, my answer is 16. Not so hard. That's all that an exponent means. Um, now we're going to throw some negative numbers in there. So pay very close attention to the parentheses, and if there are parentheses, if there are not parentheses, and if there are parentheses, what's inside them? That's very important. So we have a negative 1 here, and we have to multiply that by itself. So this is negative 1, excuse me, it's um, 1 times 1, and then we have to bring that negative along. So this is 1 times 1 is 1, and then we have the negative. We bring that along. So this is still negative 1. Um, I will tell you in algebra, they're not going to have this multiplication sign because x is usually a variable. So they're just going to put those parentheses together so it looks like parentheses 1, parentheses 1. So I'm telling you now that when you see parentheses side by side, they want you to multiply them. All right, let's go down to this next one. So you see that um, in this equation, there were no parentheses. You took the whole number, you multiplied it however many times um, the exponent said, and then you brought the negative into the answer. So basically, negative times whatever you get here. So um, let's look at this one. You have a 5 in parentheses. So we're going to do 5 times 5 times 5. All right, and this one that you would say 5 times 5 is 25, and 25 times 5 is 125, and we're going to bring along our negative. So we have negative 125. Now pay close attention. We have negative 5 to, uh, is that a squared? And you're going to say, well, what is different? Because I'm going to show you, now the negative is inside the parentheses. So now we're going to do negative 5 times negative 5. We are not going to bring along the negative. We're going, because it is part of what is being squared. So negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25, because two negatives when multiplied will give me a positive. So you have to be careful when you're doing these problems as to whether or not you carry the negative to the answer or if it is included in the answer. So it's a little bit tricky. Uh, let's do one more of these with a fraction. Yay! So we will have negative two-fifths and that is going to be squared. If I put a 3 there, it's called cubed. Um, so this, 
basically means negative two fifths times negative two fifths. And you're like, the negative is inside the parentheses, so we know that we're going to bring the negative along with the number. If it was two fifths without the parentheses here, we would bring the negative to the answer and it would be a different answer. So we'll do both of these. All right, so we're gonna multiply these. Two times two is four. Five times five is 25. All right, so we have four 25ths. Negative times negative gives me a positive, right? Here, I have two fifths times two fifths, and I get four 25ths, but the negative comes along in the answer. It is not inside parentheses. So I'm bringing it along to the end of my answer. This is um, something that algebra students struggle with all the time to, to get the parentheses correct. So I wanted you to know that. All right, let's do, um, well, if you guys do some chemistry, you'll just love expanded notation or scientific notation as it's called. So we're gonna uh, do one of those before we end for today. I have two times 10 cubed plus seven times 10 squared plus one times 10 plus six times 10 to the zero. Let's talk about that. Plus eight times one to the 10, one tenth. All right. I should have made it a little bit smaller. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change all of our exponents into numbers. So 2 times 10 to the third power. So 10 times 10 times 10, right? That's three zeros. That's 1,000. Plus 7 times 10 times 10. 10 times 10, two zeros. That's 100 plus 10 to the first, but that's just 10. Oops, plus, okay, well, let me mess up. Plus six times 10 to the zero. You're like, what is that? Okay, well, anytime you have zero as an exponent, the answer is one. So this is six times one. Um, and then finally, plus eight times one tenth, which is, how do we write one tenth? Point one. All righty, so two, <laughs> hope you can still see this. Oh. Do we have some more room you can see down here? Two times a thousand is two thousand. Seven times a hundred is seven hundred. One times ten is ten. Six times one is six. And eight times one tenth is eight tenths. And when I add all those together, get 2,700, 10 plus 16.8, that's my answer. That is scientific notation, otherwise known as standard notation, but you'll see that a lot in science, so get used to it. Alrighty. Um, The last thing I want to talk about today, square roots. Um, you see this little thing? It looks like a division house. Um, but it's not. So we're gonna do three of these today. Um, when you have to find the square root of something, what you're looking for is two exact numbers when multiplied 
equal the number under the square root. And I could explain this mathematically with squares and lots of geometry. And I'm going to save that till geometry because right now I just want you to know how to find it. And later on, we'll explain it. Sometimes we do math backwards. So they want you to know what a square root is. They're really not giving you any um, explanation as to what that means. But when we get to geometry, we will find out what it means. So basically today, what number times itself equals 81? So you're thinking, I don't know. Okay, well, let's just start with numbers. Two times two, well, that's four. Three times three, nine. Four times four is 16. Five times five is 25. Six times six is 36. Seven times seven is 49. Eight times eight is 64. Nine times nine is 81. <gasps> Yay, I found it. So nine times nine equals 81. So the square root of 81 is nine. So the square root of 25, what times what? What number when multiplied by itself will give you 25? <gasps> Five, yes. And then this tricky one, so x squared, what if I had a number three squared? Three times three is nine. The square root of nine would be three. So x times x, okay, would be a number but its square root would be x. So that's the answer to that one. So I thank you for joining me. I think we're gonna have one more algebra readiness uh, video and then if you have all of that mastered, you will be ready for algebra one. So congratulations, you are almost there. See you next time.